Morgan Wallen. Morgan, how are you, bud? I'm doing good. How are you doing? You're extremely fresh-faced. Yeah, I had a mustache yesterday, but I woke up today and <laughs> decided to off with it. There are 30 songs total on the on the two records. <clears throat> yeah. The target has a plus two. Yeah, so it'll be you 32 th- overall. So how many songs do you write to, to trim it to 32? Uh, I don't know, probably like 100, something like that, I would say. How long does it take you to write 100 songs? Uh, for me, it probably took about two and a half years. Um, I mean, you know, some people, I think a lot, uh, some artists may write more than that, but... For me, I, I I don't write every day or, or write all the time, you know, just when it comes and it comes and goes for me. But I'd say probably two and a half years. I was looking at my phone before you came in. Amy, listen to this. Morgan texts me <laughs> on Monday, December 28th at 7.50 a.m., which, by the way, it's during a, I thought my house was on fire. Someone had texted me <laughs> at 7.45 in the morning on the 28th. I was like, oh, God, what? my phone's ringing. I'm like, what, what happened? And he goes, hope you had a Merry Christmas, brother. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, Hey, Which, d- disclaimer, I was in the East I was on Eastern time zone, so it was 8.45 for me. What were you doing up so early <laughs> during break? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, what is he doing? I wasn't even up that early. And I replied back, I was like, you too, man, see you soon. And I was like, what is Morgan doing up at 8 o'clock? Three I think days that might have been, oh, I was. He- I think I was headed to Charleston. What did you, you do for Christmas? I think I was listening to the radio and you came on or something. Okay, so it was like a best of show. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. What was Christmas like for you? It was good, man. It was white. In, in East Tennessee, we had a white Christmas. That was cool. I think the last time we had that was about 10 years ago. Um, just spent it with my family, man. It was it was real cool. When you go back home, and wh- I know where you grew up and it's around Knoxville, but what's home? What do you call home when you go home? What town? Well, I, I, Knoxville and Sneville both. Um, you know, I, I spent a majority of my time in Knoxville growing up. I, I'd say probably around 10 years, but I spent five or six in Sneedville, and that's where I was born, and that's where a lot of my family's from, so I just kind of consider them both my home. If you go to a restaurant or you go to Chili's or something, do you start seeing people go, oh, Morgan Wallen's at Chili's? I don't go there anymore. (laughs) (laughs) You're just good? You just chill? Yeah. Yeah. All right, you uh, you put out a double album. Let me ask you this before I play a couple clips. Why a double album? Why not do what's being done normally? Yeah, well, me and my manager, Seth, we kind of started the year off last year joking around about the idea of a double album just because we had already accumulated, you know, probably, I don't know, 20, 20, you know, low 20s in in the number of songs that we felt like were worthy of being recorded. And, you know, that's that's a weird number because you can take that and you can usually take it down to about 15 and just have a normal album, you know, or you can go up. And I didn't think I was going to have enough time to do it um, because we were going to be touring a lot. And then, you know, obviously the way, you know, the way last year turned out, I ended up having a lot of time. And right when quarantine started, I wrote like five or six songs right, right immediately that we felt were worth recording. So we just decided to to go up instead of trimming it down. And, you know, I feel like people really want music right now more than they have in a long time because they got more time to listen to it. So it just seemed like it made sense. Where does most of your inspiration come from for writing a song? Uh, well, a lot of times it comes from experience. Uh, a lot of times it comes from something that, you know, like an idea from a song can, can spur from a lot of things. So for me, it comes a lot from people talking in a conversation. You know, they'll say something like, oh, it'll click in my head. You know, that's a song idea, a song title. But most of the things that I write are pretty, you know, from experience or something that I've seen. What about More Than My Hometown? Where does that come from and how'd that come together? Yeah, well, me and Hardy wrote that together. Um, uh, we we both come from you know similar places. He's from Mississippi. I'm from Tennessee, but they're similar areas. And um, man, we just we're real proud of where we came from. And you know, we always I think we always will be. And this song kind of also means, you know, just talking about sticking true to yourself in a, you know in a metaphorical way. Um, no matter who comes and goes, I'm gonna you know I'll be here being myself. And we both just kind of felt like those two things really coincided well together. Your high school, you went to high school the same school that Kenny Chesney went to, right? I did, yeah. Is there like a shrine to Kenny at your school? No, or surprised. well, there wasn't then. But like, it's not like now, Kenny almost. Chesney High. Like they're <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You think there'd be like a school board going, guys? We really should work. On. <laughs> but so you don't walk in. It's like home of Kenny Chesney and like that. No, uh, which I don't. At least not then. I haven't been back really since I graduated. So maybe they changed that now. But in your hometown, um, Sneedville, where they put up a Morgan Wallen sign, like Boyhood Home Morgan Wallen. Uh, I'd say so, probably. They they said that they were already wanting to do it, but they were afraid somebody would steal it. Which somebody, are, like more than my hometown, for example, I took the cover art was, you know, a Sneedville sign, and someone just stole it. So mm. I guess they, they're, I'd say it's probably a good <laughs> good suspicion. But what could happen, though, eventually, 
when you put it up, people will go go to Sneedville to take a picture with a sign and support the local economy. No, that's not, yeah, that's already happening. I went back home for um, I didn't know this, but someone just told me this the other day that I was back home and seeing my my papa, and I guess somebody found out that I was there, and people like were driving to Sneedville to try to find me and stuff. So well, that's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> well, but hopefully they stopped for a snack somewhere, and then you know, that's true. Helped the they went to the, they went to the gas station. Yeah. yeah. What which of these songs do you look forward to playing to a crowd that is going to scream it back at you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, that's a good question. Because uh, you really haven't been able to, and I mean this in the most loving, because you know I love you, right? Oh, I love you too. <laughs> you haven't been able to pl- be a massive, the massive superstar you are now to a m- massive crowd yet. No, right. Like you were starting to hit it. I told you, I saw you and I wasn't convinced and I saw you and I was like, now nah, I'm convinced. Yeah. Like, but now you have so many songs that, 20,000 people will sing back to. Yeah, it's pretty, it's unreal to think about. Um, I don't know. I think Sand in My Boots is it's one of my personal favorites, too, man. I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing that, what that one's like. But yeah, it, it's a, you know, it's like a bittersweet thing, you know, it, like, like, a, like a lot of what's going on in the world for all of us, it's bittersweet. That's, that's just part of it for me, too. Do you ever see people outside your house now driving by? Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't look outside of my house you know? too much. <laughs> I just wanted because Post Malone has a house right on a road. People drive by, I see on Instagram all the time. Drive by Post Malone's house, and I'm like, he just people just found it on the internet, but people haven't they haven't done that to you yet. No, I, which my I don't know how that I guess they found it. I'm not sure how they found his, but mine is my house is like not my name or anything, so maybe it's a little harder to find. What if his wasn't under Post Malone? <laughs> you just Google where does Post Malone live, and it popped up there. How'd you find How'd you find all these guys? No, uh, they moved here with me. Well, except for him, but we still love him. Um, so all you guys, <laughs> e- East Tennessee guys, for the most part. No, none of them. Oh, really? Yeah. They moved here for you. What do you mean? So I met uh, uh, the guy that used to be my guitar player. He he. We were not. <laughs> it was not like a bad breakup or anything he just got married and wanted to stay on the on you know at home but i met him and they used to be a couple these two right here used to be in a band together like an active rock band and uh we kind of just all became friends and started a band together and i don't know we just we we decided we we're gonna move to nashville and those guys just the band was called godsmack yeah. which is interesting <laughs> 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 all right morgan's here because he put out a double album today. It is it is all over the place, man. Every, it's so many songs. I know. And I see them, random ones, pop up all over the place. Like, just all different playlists. And I mean, I, I and I guess that's the plan. Like, get as much good stuff out to people as possible, right? Yeah, man. We You know, we felt like each song had something unique to say. And there's a lot of different sounds. We had, I, I think, you know, three main sounds that we kind of tried to use, you know, to spread out. But, um, yeah, we, we just felt like we had a, a lot of good stuff. These love songs. There's a lot. There's there's some love. Yeah, that's here. mostly on side one. Yeah. So, like, what's happening there? I think just you know life life experiences. It's nothing really. Uh, it's nothing really like present. It's just most stuff that I I just drawn from things that I've been through in the past. I gotta wonder too. Like when you're going back and you go back to play SNL, and that's a big lie. That's a live show. Yeah. I mean, the L is live. Do you get nerves still? Is <laughs> being as good as you are? Do you still get nerves when it's like here we go, click click click? Um. For some reason, I really didn't for that. I don't know why. They they were really accommodating towards us. You know, they made us feel super comfortable. So I think that really had a lot to do with it. You know, if everybody was real uptight, like get it, get here, get here, it might have been different. But it was pretty relaxed, and I felt pretty comfortable. The only thing that I was a little bit nervous is about um, after, like after I did the skit, I had I don't know less than three minutes to change clothes and then go sing. So that was what I, I was a little nervous about that. But it it was it was smooth. Do you guys as the band? Go, well, if I screw up on this stage, this is, <laughs> like, uh, what, what, what's your name? Dominic. Dominic, do yeah. you go, did you play SNL? Did oh, you go? Yeah. Okay, when you're, this is a big deal for you too, right? This oh, is not yeah. just, it is about Morgan, but this is you guys, as, like, you're the highest level. Are you going, Dominic, if you screw this up, <laughs> you're ne-. like, are you nervous? I didn't think I would be, and then as soon as we got on stage, there was a little bit of like, oh, this is, this is for real, this is really happening, but... I think it was so exciting to be there that it just kind of was like, I don't know, any like exciting football game or something. You're like, oh, I'm like more excited than I'm nervous. I don't know what I feel right now. Like, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what happens, Morgan, if That's a good one, Dominic, like for a example, game. hits a bad note in a live show? Do you look at him? Do you acknowledge that you, you saw yeah. it? Or like what happens then? Yeah, well, it, it's a little, I think it's a little more serious if it's like on live TV. But if know? it's like at a show, at a, at a so far, that's yeah. not happened, I don't think. But yeah, at a show, I'll just laugh. 
you know, it's, I, I know he's extremely talented. It's we all mess. I, I screw up the words sometimes. You know, I I do wrong things too. Which leads me to my next question. Do you know the words to all 30 of these songs? <laughs> I feel like to think I do because <laughs> I did record them. But uh, still, that's a lot to it remember. Is. Well, yeah, we're going to do a, a, a show, like a live stream thing at the Ryman, and we're we're going, we're going rehearsing for that. And I, I, was, I was telling them last night, like, I think I might have to start practicing bef before rehearsal. Amy, what do we like to ask Morgan? Have you watched Ted Lasso? No. <gasps> what? Not. Sometimes when Morgan is talking, do you hear Ted? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Ted Lasso is the greatest TV show of 2020. It's, yes. not, it's still so, now. Okay, so it's 2020. So when you hear Ted talking, you hear me then. <laughs> okay, I guess so. <laughs> He's right. such an inspiration. And two, you know, I think you're still young. I mean, you're 27, but you're still young and especially young in your career. But what would you say to other people coming up? whether they're trying to have a musical career or any profession they're seeking, like, did you see yourself being successful or like, is that, did you believe in yourself wholeheartedly or did you have people along the way encouraging you or what would you tell people? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it helps to have both, but I definitely did. Um, I don't know. For some reason I never really had doubts and I, don't, and you know, even like my first single was, you know, not a failure, but definitely not a hit. And even then, I don't, I don't know why. I just never let bad thoughts come into my mind. And I think that really, that mindset really affects your work ethic too. You know, because if you're if you're expecting to fail, you're probably not going to give your complete effort. I don't think. I've never really thought about it that much, but for some reason, I just never let anything negative get in my head. I think yeah. that's a huge part of your success. I'm sure, and it's very Tad Les Ted Lasso. <laughs> We, yeah, you gotta, I need to watch show. that. It's the best show. You have yeah. to. I think I saw that you put that on. You put that on something. It's, like my, it's my number one favorite show, and I tattooed it on my arm. Did so you? That's what I, no, no, I didn't. Yeah. Like, can you? No, I have a Morgan Wallen tattoo over that, that arm. Yeah. <laughs> on the other arm. Who? Who is it? Who's in it? Uh, Jason, Jason Sudeikis. Sudeikis. Oh, he's he's hilarious. Now, Sudoku is what you do as a puzzle name. <laughs> Sudeikis is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whatever you What's know that about? guy. He's a football coach at Wichita State, and he he gets recruited to go be the, a soccer coach but he's never played soccer in his life <laughs> in england in england yeah oh, so, so he's I'll, like faking his way through it well you have to watch it to find out okay. if you watch it let me know it's good let me say that the last track on the second record is the song eric church wrote yeah eric church i'm fans of all three of them eric church luke laird and josh thompson so yeah. individually love them all me how'd, too. The, how'd that song come to you um i had we were still on tour at that point and um i'd brought luke and Rodney Clawson out one weekend to write some songs while we were out. And Luke's obviously a frequent collaborator with, with Eric, and he had just heard me say something in my show talking about Eric Church. So he was like, oh, man, you know, I, I love him too. You know, I write with him and all that stuff. And he's like, oh, let, me, let, me play some, let me play some songs we wrote. And, and so we listened, and I heard that one, and I really liked it. And you know, I said, well, you, is he going to record that, you know? And he's like, I don't know. Let me ask him. And he, Eric was like, no. And I said, well, can I? <laughs> And they said, yeah, so. That's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, quitting time. Yeah, quitting yeah. time. On, it's the final track on the record. Right. The other thing that I like, too, is because I remember when Diplo put it out, and you sang it when it was Heartless, but it was on Diplo's record. Mm -hmm. But you have you have a more uh, called the Wallen mix mm -hmm. on the record. We, do we have that, Ray? Can we play some of that? You gotta be so heartless. I know you think it's harmless. You're tearing me apart. So the difference in the mix is just a lot of standard instruments instead of yeah and like real drums and stuff like that yeah man you got you got a lot but you got a lot of great stuff man it's awesome thank you super excited for you everybody check it out it's dangerous you probably have no choice it can be played everywhere everybody you're getting get here you ever go anywhere and hear your music playing over the top yeah well the other day i went in kroger and it was my song was playing i was like <laughs> i immediately just walked out <laughs> all right there he is morgan i'm not Wallen. that hungry Guys, good to see you guys. You guys killed it. You're great. All Thank dressed you. in black, too. Yeah. You got exactly. the memo I sent out. I was like, don't come in here with any color. All right. There they are. Uh, Morgan Wallen. Check out the record. Back in a minute. Nice job. There. Oh, well, hold on. Let me mention this before we go. Amy tonight is hosting Morgan's iHeart album release on like 150 radio stations. Yes. Boom. Tonight. Got that plug in there. there. Thank you. There we go. Thank Sweet. you. Bye, everybody. Thank y'all.